Thank you. I think it was prescient to change the order and let, because I didn't share my views with any of the panel and I didn't know what Sunity was going to say, but I, I think she really kind of put it in a global perspective for the rest of us to speak. Thank you, Sunity. Um, before I really begin, I, I would like, I took note of, of what you said, that we, this is the first change that, that outraged people have seemed to wrought out of a government. And I began thinking back, the smelters, way back to the Karani racetrack, my old colleague, who, my former colleague, who he is here. Um, all of those were stopped on change of government, even the racetrack was Dr. Williams and O'Halloran's baby and George Chambers stopped it. So maybe it wasn't so much the influence, it was a new, a new team coming in. The highway to Point Fortin was first announced by Dr. Williams in his 1981 budget speech. It was to start that year uh, along with the highway to Mayaro. It was a great time of great controversy. We were a very wealthy society. There was, a, as continues, a lot of corruption, a lot of um, projects which we did not understand. The Karani racetrack was one, the Mount Hope Hospital was another. Contracts were being awarded to foreign governments who selected foreign contractors who came to Trinidad. Nobody went to Tobago, who came to Trinidad and built projects that could have been built locally by local engineers, by local contractors. But the, the highway remained dormant in all of those years. It, um, we discussed it at a forum held by the Tapia House Movement back in March 1981. That was the weekend Dr. Williams passed away. and. Um, that kind of took all the news of, the, of that forum away. But in a paper called Development Priorities and Our Duty, I tried to persuade that things like the highway to Point Fortin and Mayaro were far more important than the Karani racetrack. Um, we didn't succeed at the time, but with the coming of George Chambers, he stopped some projects like that and he instituted commissions of inquiry into the racetrack and a couple of other projects. The commission of inquiry into the racetrack basically supported what we, the objectors, were seeing, and the racetrack never got built. Um, the highway, as I said, nothing happened. It was mentioned in budget speeches for the ensuing 30 years. If you go back, you'll see under the projects in the pipeline, highway to Port of Spain, highway to Point Fortin, sorry. It was coming up this coming year, but it never did. Now, we first began to hear about the highway to Port of Spain about two, three years ago, to Point Fortin about two or three years ago. And uh, we realized that studies had been going on, and it was on the previous government's proposals to go ahead with the highway. In the meanwhile, I, way back in 81, even though I was doubting it would be built, I pulled out my maps and I looked, I wondered, as a, as a person who grew up in Vecini and worked in the oil fields all, all through the oil belt, and knew the difficulties of travel in St. Patrick, I pulled out my maps and I began to look at the, at the highway routes that a person like me would consider. And I looked at widening Mosquito Creek, I looked at going straight through the swamp, and I looked at a route around that would pick up Pinal, Siparia, etc. I couldn't believe anybody would build a, a widened Mosquito Creek, because that is essentially going through the swamp, and that would continue to sink and would continue to flood. I didn't believe anybody would go directly through the swamp per se, and plain old lame on me, I saw a route around the edge of the swamp as probably being the most feasible. Now, this is without any study, without knowing soil conditions or anything like that, but I just thought in terms of traffic, in terms of the times that I had traveled south and turned back late at night from Mosquito Creek because it was flooded, I knew those roads too. So when the highway was brought to the fore again, and I understand it was really brought to the fore around 1999, 
and then the studies began. And the big thing on this dispute we are having is why the studies have remained hidden until yesterday. Because the studies are there. Um, they are technical studies done by very competent people that showed essentially all of them that I have managed to get my hands upon and a bibliography that I picked up from a paper by Leah Trintoplan. And Leo Trintoplan is really not a, a sort of engineering firm in support of the current government of Trinidad and Tobago. Basically said that the best, most practical route for the highway would be through Pinal, Devi, Siberia, Faisabad. So the problem seems to be that nobody said this. Nobody has come out until Carson Charles, I think, on Sunday. Nobody ever came and said, folks, we actually have some studies here. Because I would never believe that a firm like Trinto Plan would go and um, develop and do the research for a highway which was totally impractical in terms of its buildability and things like that. I have faith in, in local engineers, and I have faith in what we can do in this country. And um, this was the route that most people, that all of the studies indicated with very minor deviations, would be the best, altern, best route to put a highway through which would service the county of St. Patrick. And the county of St. Patrick doesn't stop at Siberia, and nor does it stop at Point Fortin. It goes through, to, it serves the oil fields in Palo Seco, Erin, Chatham, Cedrus, Ekakas, and these places. Um, I looked at how, tried to do a little research on how this thing developed, the, the disputes and so on. And while the dispute now and the argument is, and most legitimately, the practicability, the costs, the soil conditions, the environment, the hydrology, all of these, which could have been asked before but weren't. The genesis of the, of the current reroute, as far as best as I can understand, you may, you may enlighten me further on us, was the, that offense was taken to the fact that homes were going to be acquired along one portion of the route. They did not appear to be problems with the acquisition of homes between Point Fortin and Faisabad, between Faisabad and Superior and so on. It was one portion of the route along, and that is the route that we, we are concerned about and that we should be concerned about mostly in terms of costs and in terms of the, the problems that this route can cause. Um, we, I'm sorry, I haven't been reading, so I lost, I lost my trend a little bit there. Um, the, Argument that it's unfair to acquire lands, I'm sure that if my lands were being acquired, I could support that. But we've developed this country, and we will continue, and indeed the whole Western world does this. We develop our countries in large respect by acquiring private lands for state purposes. The injustice would be how much money you're getting for your land, and that should be your argument. Um, Digo Martin Highway was built with the mass removal of lots of people. The highway between Chaguanas and San Fernando was built with the acquisitions of land and removal of people. We are actually getting a point that I worry that we may never be able to develop again because of the intensity of the argument and so on. And that boils back down to a lack of trust in what we are being given, which Suniti has, has indicated. And it's a lack of the maturity, as she says, on our part by the way we try to deal with the issues. Um, the question of people telling you, oh, they're rushing to buy the land and so on. The lands were sold in 2005 under another regime. You may have seen, I think it was in The Guardian, where somebody is being charged with a conflict of interest because he did the study and he bought the land and all that. The lands that come up for acquisition for government purposes are not bought when the contractor brings his bulldozers in. Eh? If you go to Toko, you wouldn't find land that any of us could afford there. And the reason you wouldn't find that is about five, six years, maybe more years ago, there was talk of a ferry port in Tobago. 
and all of the land between Matura and Toko was bought up by wealthy people to hold on to and wait for the road to come and wait for the port and make their money. And that is when those lands were bought. They weren't bought by anybody currently. They were purchased at that time. They were valued and purchased. People built on them to increase the value. All of this is wrong, but it happened. It is not part of any hostility that I see the current government imposing on anybody. Those lands were there. Now, if all of these studies indicated that this was a route that should be used, why didn't the project start? PNM had done the, let me see the previous government, had done the studies, the EIAs were done by Dr. George Sami, highly respected consultant here in Trinidad. They may be fraud, they may be wrong, but they were done. So why weren't they shared? The hydrology and the hydro hydraulical reports were done. Why weren't they shared? What was wrong with MIDCO or the government as a whole that they did not come out and say, look at the studies. We didn't do them, folks. They're, here they are. They were done before, and they indicate this is not our project. You may wonder why the present government, the previous government, is not attacking the project per se. They are not attacking it because it was their project. They just never started it. Maybe they realized the cost would be prohibitive, and those costs seem exorbitant. But the point is, the, the, the principle is that every study done so far, but kept hidden, has indicated that, well, I won't say every study. Somebody may bring a study which shows otherwise. But I'm not aware of a study that, based on environment, ecology, engineering, hydrology, etc., etc., I'm not aware of one which says there's a better route for this highway to traverse than this one. Now, it wasn't on the manifesto, and I agree with the solidity there. When the UNC, and let's use the word, when the UNC came into power, sorry, um, <laughs> they must have seen this thing when Jack would have walked in. Everybody here knows Jack is, a, is an old colleague of mine. Jack would have walked in his office and asked, what's going on, what you have on the books and so on, what's happening here, and this highway would have come up. And you wonder what's been going on. The last study done on it, the Leo Trinter Plan revised study was done in 2009. The, the UNCPP came into power in 2010. And they looked at this, and why are they rushing it? Not to put money in their pocket on the land or the this and the tar sands and all of that. Very simply, they rushed into this project, funding or not, to be completed by 2015 for one reason only, or better let me say two reasons only. And those reasons are the constituency of Point Fortin and the constituency of Labry. And if that road got built by 2015, the UNC would pick up the votes of Labry and Point Fortin because I believe, and nobody has done a poll, and I, that is another curiosity, you, we, everybody, why has nobody gone to South Trinidad and asked everybody, what do you feel, is it yay or nay? And let us know, we have something to know. But my feeling is that the people south of or the Mosquito Creek would have voted to have that highway, and in gratitude would probably bring the UNC back, because I don't know how many of you all know it, but Labry and Point Fortin are more depressed than Lavantee. Um, and that is, you did go there, you will see that. Not true. Not true? All right. Um, I'll drive you through the back roads of Labry. Anyway, let's not argue that. Go ahead. See, that's not in. Um, what I would do, I would have suggested that that highway, because I am worried about the cost, would go out to tender into local contractors, all the major local road building contractors, in sections, and the best bids for each section would be awarded, but only one contractor to each section. And I would go to those people who build the um, interchange by Grand Bazaar there, and ask them to design and build the interchanges because they have a technology that is clean, interesting, and quick. And I would have had our local contractors bidding against each other each one building a different section of the highway, because that is how many highways are built in other countries.
by separating it and joining them up. Frankly, I would be appalled that we ever went to try and widen Mosquito Creek. I think if the highway is built, then Mosquito Creek can continue to serve the people of Dow Village and South Oropooch and so on with less traffic. And everybody going to Labre and, and beyond and Faisabad and so would be using the highway. Um, I have no study to back that up, but as a person who drives the roads, that's how I feel I would do it. So I think that's what should happen. I, again, I would feel that with the, the news breaking last night and today, that all of this documentation should be given to the JCC and APET, the Association of Professional Engineers, and let them go very thoroughly through the existing studies. I mean, I cannot imagine we are going to go and drill test holes all along the route again. If we are doing that, we have to wonder why, because we have to be very suspicious. But I believe in the work done by our engineers. Before I end, I just want to say very quickly, there was one serious doubt in the study that I read, and that was the fact that they recommended for one section of the road, the DV section, surcharging the route, which is piling dirt very briefly, to, forgive me if I don't put it right, on top of it to compress the soil below, and that this should be done for a period of two to four years. Now, unless the government and the consultants can come up and tell us why they can do this in less than two to four years when the report recommends this needs to be done, then basically I think the, the, the route stands on the basis of what one person formerly of the town and country planning told me, a no-brainer in terms of social purposes to route it where it is and apparently on most of the engineering studies that are available so far, the route ought to stand as it is. I, I really think so, and I hope that that can be debated without emotion and um, without hostility, although I must admit I used to be a hostile person myself. Thank you all very much.